My name is Danvers Bailiu. I'm the COO of HideMyAss.com. We're a VPN provider, one of the most popular VPN providers um, in, the on, in the world, uh, selling to over 120 countries uh, with hundreds of servers and IP thousands, tens of thousands of IP addresses around the world. So Avangate is technically a reseller of our product and it's very convenient for us. They, they take our customers' money using all sorts of different payment methods. They handle the subscription side of it, so they're recurring. Um, they deal with fraud issues. Um, they have some clever little marketing tools to improve conversion and so on. And it's sort of all in one, one-stop shop, turnkey solution, whatever you want to call it, uh, package. So you can get up and running very quickly to sell virtual goods online. We looked at a number of payment providers uh, and uh, we um, were finding payment to be quite a challenge and uh, we, we started speaking to Avangate and we put them in a sort of head-to-head -head trial with one of their competitors and we ran that for a few months and we evaluated the results and at the end of the day we decided um, Avangate was our best option and we went ahead with them. So um, taking money from lots of people in over 120 countries is quite a complicated undertaking. Um, if you're selling virtual goods, i.e. nothing that gets put in an envelope and stuck in the post. Um, you, you have additional challenges because you don't have that kind of physical link with your customer. Um, we were finding there were issues around fraud against us, so people using dodgy credit cards and so on um, in order to buy our services or try and buy our services. Um, some of the payment gateways don't offer any kind of fraud protection or fraud filters and those are things you either have to do yourself or build on top. Um, Avangate handle that all in-house and they decide whether or not um, to, take, um, to take the risk. In fact, some payment gateways actually penalise you if you get a chargeback and they, they charge you in a sort of a, what's called a chargeback fine on top of your, uh, your refund that you have to give the customer. Whereas Avangate sort of take the full risk, they don't charge any of those sort of fees and so you're really in a partnership with them to sort of fight that kind of fraud and so on. So for us, that was a big thing. And then the other thing is doing things like authorization rates. Um, and there's a lot of technical um, complexity underneath getting a credit card authorized. And so for example, if you have an American credit card and you try and, uh, and you have a European acquiring bank on, on your side as the um, shop, um, the American credit card issuer might not recognize your bank and just declines the transaction because it's a sort of weird foreign transaction. But if you work with a reseller like Avangate, they can use multiple acquirers in different countries and they can have a US acquiring bank to handle those US credit cards, for example. And that pushes up your authorization rate by several percentage points, making you know, quite an impact on your underlying sales. When you're putting mission critical elements uh, with a supplier, you really want to know you've got that uh, personal relationship, even though it's all internet based, you want to know you can pick up the phone when you've got a problem um, and talk to somebody about that and get it solved quickly. And uh, we felt confident um, that they were keen on our business, that we mattered to them. Um, and it's, so it's been a good relationship. As our reseller and provider, Avangate are very helpful with this new uh, EU VAT rule that's coming into place on the 1st January. Um, the EU, EU have rather helpfully changed the law on VAT, so as a uh, provider of, uh, sort of telecom services, we have to charge VAT based on the country of the consumer as opposed to our uh, country. And um, the, in its wisdom, the EU have decided that uh, you need to collect two pieces of evidence of where your consumer is located. Um, and if those two pieces of evidence conflict, which unfortunately they often do, you're supposed to collect a third piece of evidence. Now, um, these rules are really unhelpful because they don't actually make a big difference to the amount of VAT that you have to collect overall. It may make a tiny difference to us. Um, but the regulatory headache is, is much, much higher. Um, for example, if you miss two VAT returns in a row or late with them, you then have to go and file your VAT in each individual country in the EU where you have uh, sales. And of course, those countries don't translate their forms into English. They don't accept 
uh, foreign currency. I mean, it, the whole thing is a complete nightmare. But if you do your EU sales through a company like Avangate, they just take care of all of that for, for you. So it's a massive selling point for, for a company like that. I think we had our first discussions with them in around July or August 2012. Um, we began our trial with them, I think, in around October. Um, that trial, I think we gave, we allowed three months for the trial. Um, and then we had um, some results in kind of January time, and it took a while to analyze those. And I think by about the middle of February or something like that, or early March, we, we said, yeah, you, you've won your trial, and now you're getting the, the full, you know, the prize, as it were, of, of the amount of traffic um, that was on offer at that point. So, um, yeah, you, you know, it's a like, good six, nine months from initial contact to getting going. Um, that said, had we wanted to get up and running with them straight away, there was nothing really stopping us from, you know, initial contact to, to live deployment could have could have been done in a matter of weeks or months, you know, a couple of couple of weeks really. I mean, there are certain components nowadays which where it's actually more risky to have it on the premise or to have your own system in place. Um, you know, ultimately, I'm not aware of a billing system that a startup company, for example, could kind of buy and install and run and link themselves directly to Visa and Mastercard. It's just, it's just not available these days, or you'd be bonkers to even attempt that kind of integration when there are so many easy options out there. I think you've got to be quite uh, considerate when you know, you've got a running solution that works for you really well and, you know, there aren't lots of upgrades you want to run and it's all bespoke and in-house and so on, then, yeah, you know, you, you want to think carefully about moving that, you know, to a uh, third-party provider. Um, but, you know, certainly when you're starting out, um, a lot of these services are super convenient and, um, you know, you, you, they scale with you and they're backed by big... Um, big companies with big balance sheets and large teams of engineers and it just saves an awful lot of um, time and effort on developing stuff that doesn't make you any money. We're pretty demanding of, of our suppliers. We don't expect there to be technical difficulties um, once something's up and running. Um, we're prepared to make an effort to work with people and to do the integration if it's, if it's worthwhile but you know, increasingly I think companies like us expect integration to be quite simple. We expect people to have clean APIs that are easy for our developers to get their head around with good documentation, probably with good support as well. Um, some suppliers will fly in developers to sit down with your team and, you know, make sure that the integration is all smooth. Um, so you look for those sort of things at, at the initial stage. Um, but yeah, once you're up and running, you just expect the thing to work. I think it's really important to look at the nature of your business and work out how complicated your payment structure is. Um, whether or not you need to invest in your own infrastructure or whether you can go for a one-stop solution like Avangate um, or whether you, you, know, you need to do something a bit more bespoke. Uh, for a lot of businesses, it, it makes a lot of sense uh, to just outsource it, even though the, the ticket price of the commission is higher if you go with an Avangate as opposed to one of the new uh, services like Stripe. Um, but Avangate does a load of development for you that you would have to do yourself um, or buy add-on products on top. And of course, even though you can buy add-on products, you still have to integrate them and, and sort them all out. So um, it's, it's horses for courses. There's no one size fits all, you know, um, cliche after cliche, but it, it really is, you know, there are no, there are no sort of shortcuts in business and you, each, each company has to make their own decision. Yeah.